warm greetings, dearest friends. Welcome to another episode of In His Name. With me again is Pastor Anton von Nikak from Cornerstone Church in Pretoria, South Africa. And we have been discussing the elementary teachings listed in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. We have been having a fantastic time. We have already been through several of them. We have discussed repentance from dead works. We have discussed faith towards God. We have discussed baptisms. And now we are speaking about the laying on of hands. We had a wonderful start to the discussion in our previous episode and now we carry on. Uh, we spoke about the Old Testament uh, mainly in the previous episode and we just moved on to the New Testament towards the end of the show and we spoke about Acts chapter 6 in which seven men were appointed to be administrators really of the early church yeah. through the laying on of hands. Now Anton let's jump across to Acts chapter 13 and read another example in which people were appointed to a position through the laying on of hands and I will read it from verse 1. Acts chapter 13 from verse 1. Now in the church that was at Antioch there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Now, Anton, we chatted a little bit about this in the previous episode, that the laying on of hands as an appointment is really a confirmation of the call that God has already placed on someone. You know, by somebody laying hands on, on you, it is not a magic touch that makes you suddenly an evangelist, yeah. you know, or, or suddenly this or suddenly that. That calling is already in you, that calling is already on you. It is a confirmation of that calling. And that we can see so clearly there in verse two. The Lord says, the spirit of the Lord says, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So they were already called to the work. Mm -hmm. And you can explain to us now how they had already been active in the work yeah. for many years before this moment actually happened in which they were laid hands on and officially mm. sent out to do the work that the Lord has call, had called them to do. Well, Tamron, Scripture tells us that um, if I would ask you the question that when that, that Saul or Paul become an apostle, when did he do that? When did that actually happen? And, and probably most of our viewers would say, right, that was on the way to Damascus when he had that experience that happened right there. But it's interesting because if we study scripture, you would see that at that point in time, for me, that was his conversion. That was when it happened. Yes. But then, then he disappears. He's, he's away for about 14 years. Nobody knows what he's doing and what he's at and what he's busy with. But it's interesting because when we now find him again, we find him in this chapter and he is among teachers and prophets. Mm. And it's interesting because it's only after they've laid hands on him that he starts mentioning or speaking about himself as an apostle. He was already busy because he spoke about himself a few times as a teacher, but it was after the laying on of hands that the appointment came for him to become the apostle. Wow. And there was a, a, a series of events that had to happen, and one of them was the laying on of hands by these people after it was prompted by the Holy Spirit. And I want to I wanna re reiterate Yes. that part it is prompted by the holy spirit Amen. that that is what i want it you to do it, is, decision, it wasn't a decision a, a good it idea that the other disciples had <laughs> and, 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 and what i what i like about it is and what i love about it is is when we spoke about in one of the previous episodes we spoke about how the d disciples and the apostles changed after or before the holy spirit yes. came and how it was afterwards and this was a a, a very good example of them being led by what the spirit yes. actually want yes. and this this is what you need is, is if you are out there there and, and you want to become a prophet or you want to become an apostle, it, it would be a fruit that is in your life. Mm. But at least hear the Holy Spirit on it going, this is what I want. I want oh, you to yes. separate that guy for that for that yes. position. This is what you need to understand. This is I, I once heard a man speak about this and, and everything was going around and people were saying, but why don't you call yourself bishop? <laughs> And, uh, and it was funny at that point in time because nowadays everybody is either bishop someone or they, yes. they apostle. Or, or, or two you, titles, yeah, yeah. bishop doctor yeah, or they, bishop apostle. They kind, of like, they kind of like just jump upon that. <laughs> and, 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 and this was what I loved about his remark. He came back and he said, I don't call myself bishop because if I carry the name, the attack of that office falls upon me. 
Mm-hmm. And, and this is what you need to be careful for. If you go out there going, telling everybody, this is who I am and this is what I do, you need to understand that that laying on of hands kind of like will give you the ability to deal with the attack mm-hmm. that comes when you carry that thing. If he was the apostle, he had to take certain challenges on and that was mm-hmm. needed. He needed the help of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. in order for him to survive those attacks yes. that were coming. Don't just run out there and calling yourself whatever, whoever, oh, right. because it's not about the title, it's about the fruit. It's it's about yeah. what you do. And did the Holy Spirit give yes. the call that say, this yes. is it, separate those people that, for that part. That is the key. Has, has the Lord called you to that position or yeah. not? You know, somebody laying hands on you and saying, okay, yes, you are now appointed an evangelist. You are now appointed a pastor. You know, that is a confirmation of the call. But if that call was not placed in you by God mm. and God did not knit you together in your mother's womb for that purpose, yeah. You won't make it. Yeah, for I sure. mean, we know from our own lives. Yeah. I mean, you are a pastor. I'm an evangelist. If the Lord had not called us to those offices, we wouldn't be here by mm. now. Uh, de- definitely not. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would, I would probably be a lawyer somewhere. You know, in a firm in some big city in the world. And I don't know. Maybe you would be on the beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we, we definitely would not be doing what we're doing because it's tough. Yeah. And the attacks. And, and the responsibility that you have in that position, if you're not called to it, mm. you will first of all make a big mess. Yeah. And secondly, you won't survive it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you said now that story of, of people saying to you know, that one gentleman, oh, why don't you call yourself this? Yeah. I mean, my husband and I had actually a very humorous instance once. I might ministered at a church um, wonderful pastors and uh, they were having breakfast with us you know before we we flew out again um, and they asked my husband they said well what is your title mm. um, and and my husband as you know his gifting is an administrator you know he's a Stephen yeah. <laughs> like we read yeah. about in Acts chapter 6 I mean he's full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom you know mm. uh, the Lord uses him mightily but he is an administrator that is his gifting um, give him a problem to solve, give him logistics to figure out, and he thrives. He's yeah. brilliant at it. So he said to them, well, I'm an administrator. He said, my title is Mr. Yeah. Um, and the, the one pastor you know, turned to him and he said, no, you should be pastor. <laughs> I prophesy within the year, your yeah. title pastor. will be pastor. <laughs> and I could see my husband, you know, I know him so well, you yeah. know, he's holding back. Yeah. You know, not to not to have his say. <laughs> um, and wonderful people bless them, but you know they, they they didn't understand that if God hasn't placed that call on you, if that call has not come from the Lord, mm. somebody can lay hands on you. The the most wonderful man of God in all the world yeah. can lay hands yeah. on on you and say, "Oh, I appoint you to this." And it will be a disaster. Yeah. It won't work. It will not work at all. I want to literally say this to you, that if somebody had to prophesy it over you and you were surprised about it, that's probably not true. <laughs> probably not true. Because prophecy is confirmation, not revelation. So you need to understand that if you find yourself and somebody says, oh, you should be a pastor, and you go, really? Then, then there's something wrong. If somebody goes, you should be an evangelist, you don't pick no. those things. No. You were chosen. God exactly. has said, set these two guys. It's interesting because he did not pick any two in the group. No. The Bible said that there were prophets and teachers among them, but set these two apart because those are the two that I'm going to use right now in this season. It didn't lesser the other people in the room. No. It was just God showing us that at this point in time and for this time and this season, his hand was upon these two guys exactly. for a specific reason. To get the job the job done. No good. I think we've, we've adequately discussed in the New Testament how the laying on of hands is used for appointment confirmation. Yeah. Um, let's jump on to the laying of hands being used used uh, for healing and for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I think a good example of this is in Acts chapter 9. If we can just go back a couple of chapters, we've been speaking about Saul. Um, so it's actually a good, good passage to read. Um, and I want to read uh, the passage in which Ananias mm-hmm. um, is called on by the Lord to go and pray for Saul. Yeah. You know, he's just had that Damascus Road experience and he's really been struck blind yeah. you because know, of the glory of the Lord that, that he had witnessed and he had had his salvation experience on that road. And I'll read from verse 10, Acts chapter 9 from verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, And he said, here I am, Lord, which is the appropriate response when the Lord calls your name. So the Lord said to him, arise 
and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. So in other words, Ananias was trying to get out of it. But the Lord was not falling for it. <laughs> but the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. There we can see that a calling is not all joy and bubbles, yep. but there is much suffering and conflict that comes from it. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Now it is very it is very relevant to me that the Lord very specifically said to Ananias, you know, you need to put your hands on Saul. You need to lay your hands on Saul. Um, now, the laying on of hands was for a, a twofold reason, so that Saul would receive his sight back. And I suppose we could call this healing, but in, in the same way, it almost wasn't, you know, because the, the Lord wouldn't have put a sickness on Saul. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it was more an opening of his eyes mm. um, that needed to, to happen. Um, but the laying of hands needed to affect that. And then also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these are, are two of the, the prime reasons why the Lord needs us as believers to lay hands on one another. Yeah. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and healing or deliverance, you know, being set free from something. Yeah. Um, two very, very important reasons. Um, when Jesus gave his disciples the Great Commission, and when he spoke about uh, the sick being healed, he says, and you will lay your hands mm. on the sick yeah. and the sick will be healed. Yeah. And there is something very special about laying hands on somebody and um, something very unique. And um, now we know in, in our crusade, sometimes the crowds are so big that we cannot lay hands on everybody, um, neither for healing nor for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then we pray over the whole crowd. Um, but in any service, that we have in which the crowds are small enough to call people to the front for healing or for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, we do that so we can actually lay hands on them and pray. This is an instruction that the Lord has given and we take it most seriously. I just want to say this because for me there's a difference between what we spoke about just now about the, the, the confirmation mm. of the calling. And, 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 and we need to understand this, that governing ones will release anointed ones. And you need to understand that part. But this is different. This is now, like you just said now, this is the believer that were instructed to go out and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And every believer. And everybody. Not just those yeah. in the fivefold yeah. ministry. Yeah. Everybody. If you believe, this will be the sign that yes. follow. You will lay your hands on the yes. sick and they will, is how the, this goes. And, and, and what I just want us to focus on just for one minute and you, and you started this out because Ananias kind of like wanted to get out. And oh, the yes. reason for it, why he wanted, is he was afraid. There was fear on the inside of him. And, 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 and I want to say this because I want to speak to maybe some people out there <laughs> that, that you would, let's find yourself in, in the work situation, maybe yes. at work, and, and your colleague is sick. Yes. And you, you know that if I can just lay my hands, but now you're afraid. What will they say? How will they do it? And, and it's interesting because this is it. Ananias wanted to get out mm. as, out, out of fear. He was afraid. What is going to happen? Lord, we know that this guy, I mean, and Saul was involved when, when, when Stephen was yes. stoned. He was there. He and, was and, a murderer. Yeah, he and, professed and, himself to be a murderer and, and, in Scripture. And, and, and we, want to, we want to get out of it going, no, what will happen? How would this happen? And it's just God going, insisting, I need you to lay hands on this guy. Why? Because I need my power to flow. Exactly. I need a touching point. I need a point that is touched um, at, exactly. at, at, as a starting point for this to happen. Exactly. And, you know, a couple of episodes back, we spoke about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you become filled of the Spirit of God, full of the power of God. You become the channel that God yeah. wants to use. Yeah. So by laying your hands on someone, you know, you are, you are really connecting your channel 
to the person who needs that touch and God will then flow through you. The Spirit of God will flow through you, shoot through your fingers, yeah. um, you know, for lack of a better description, into that person yeah. and get the job done. So that touch is so important to the Lord. And what we must also emphasize from that passage is Ananias needed to use the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's also something important and that we always need to understand. You know, when you pray for the sick, you use the name of Jesus. Yeah. When you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're using the name of Jesus. Yeah. Whenever you're praying for someone, you are always calling on the name of Jesus because it is that name that the Holy Spirit inside of you then responds to. And yes, oh, he heals and oh, he fills with the Spirit and oh, he delivers. He responds to the profession of that name. And this is exactly what Ananias did. He laid hands on Saul. He used the name of Jesus and bam. <laughs> it happened. It happened. It happened. Uh, you know, the, the, the laying on of hands, I find it to be such an intimate thing. It's such a precious thing. I mean, I mean, you will know when you pray for people and you can lay your hands on them and pray for them. It's almost as if in that moment, your emotions are pushed aside and you're actually feeling the emotions of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, and it is the most incredible privilege to be with that person in that moment yeah. in which they receive their healing, they receive that deliverance, they receive that touch. It is a privilege that God has given us as spiritual believers to lay hands on people and be in that moment with them. Yeah in which they encounter God. Mm. Um, it is something very special, something that we should not take lightly and something we should really jump at doing yeah. um, because it is a grand privilege. Um, you know, Jesus, throughout the Gospels, we see him praying for the sick. Yeah. I mean, he, he prayed for the sick wherever he went. And, you know, often he would speak a word and someone would be healed or to a crippled person, you know, rise up and walk. Um, the, the man at the pool of Bethesda, you know, rise, take up your mat. Mm. Um, he would speak a word and the miracle would happen. Um, but he also loved to touch mm. because that, that touching, that laying on of hands, there's something so sacred in it. You know, maybe we can hop across quickly to Mark. Um, at, the, at the beginning of Mark, um, J Jesus needs to pray for a leper, Mark chapter 1 um, from verse 40. You know, this little story of the leper encountering Jesus and being prayed for, this touches me so deeply. Let's read, read from verse 40. And now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing to be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And the story I find so beautiful because the leper, the leper did not doubt the ability of Jesus to heal him. He doubted the heart of Jesus. Mm. He said, if you are willing, not yeah. if you are able, yeah, that is willingness. if you are willing, if you want to, I don't think you want to, but if you want to, I know you can do it. And Jesus is so moved by this statement, if you want to, you know, and he cries out, I want to, I'm willing. And he so, he so wants to show this leper that he wants to, that he puts his hands on him. And we know leprosy is a disease that you get through touch. Yeah. And I mean, we don't know what this leper looked like, but leprosy is a horrific disease. We know it, it disfigures you. Mm. I mean, this leper might have been a sight. Maybe all of Jesus' disciples were keeping their distance, mm. not wanting to catch the disease. Yeah. And Jesus leaps forward leaps forward and says, I want to, and he grabs hold of him, you know, and he says, be healed, yeah. you are healed, and the leprosy leaves his body. Um, Jesus wanted to touch, you know, so this touching and praying for healing or praying for deliverance is such a sacred thing. You know, we, we do it not just because Jesus commanded it. He said, lay hands on the sick. But we do it because it's the heart of God. He wants to touch. He wants to be intimate. He wants to pull that suffering person in and say, I feel what you are feeling. Yeah. Let me touch you. You know, he touches them from above and we touch them with our physical hands. And together, together, the miracle happens. I think because you now just touched us that with the leper being there, there was a way on, on if, you were, if you were a leper in those days, you, you had an announcer. 
while you were walking. Because while you were walking, somebody would continuously screaming, unclean, unclean, unclean. And leprosy was so bad that, that if you suffered from leprosy, you had to be outside of the town. Yeah. You cannot go into town yeah. because people were afraid yes, of they you. Would catch you, it. you would touch something and they will get it. And, it's, and what I love about the spiders, and it's exactly how you said it just now, is, is Jesus not being afraid of his mm -hmm. condition. No. Not at all. He, he just goes, you know what, this is it. Probably that person's fear was, was nobody's touching me. Yeah. He, for, for his whole life, nobody wanted to feel what he felt yeah. like. Yet this Jesus mm. said, I just want to stretch out my hands and I just want to touch you with everything. Us touching somebody else while we're praying for them yes. is for one moment us stepping into the world whereby they find themselves Amen. and us becoming one with what it Amen. is they're doing. And just for one minute, we don't know what it feels like, mm. but this is it. What we carry is the answer to whatever Amen. is wrong with you right now. Amen. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to. I can tell you, you can have all the money in the world. Mm. If you're sick, oh, yes. if your health is gone, there is a wrong that is happening Indeed. in there. And this Jesus just said, you know what, I'm willing. I'm not only willing to heal you, I'm willing to touch, to you. touch you. I'm willing to become one with where you find yourself. Yeah. And us praying for people and laying our hands on them, this is for one minute, us going, I don't care what your condition is, because what I carry yes. is greater than what you carry. Amen. Just receive Amen. what it is I've got for you. Amen. And the Spirit of God flows through us and into them, and the Lord gets the job Come done. On, yeah. you know, and, and maybe we can say as well that, you know, touching is not pushing. Yeah. You know, I think we've all experienced <laughs> that, you know, especially us, you know, who go to, to churches that are more charismatic or more mm. Pentecostal. Um, you know, we've all had people pray for us and they, they push you. Yeah. You know, they push you down. Um, you know, please, viewers, when you pray for people, don't push. You know, gently, gently. I um, you know, in the in the work environment, um, if if somebody is not familiar with the laying on of hands, you can just put your hand on their yeah. shoulder, and pray for them gently. You know, the, the the force is is the spirit inside of you. He is the force. You know, your hands don't need to be the force. I just want to say we should just just emphasize yeah, that. I just want to say that it's not about you. No, it's not about the person no. praying. It is. I, I I read this the other day um, of uh, evangelist Daniel Kalinda. He posted this thing and he said, when it comes to his job, the easiest part is miracles because he doesn't do it. Exactly. And and, and I want to use this as an example. Uh, if if you come to my house mm -hmm. and my garden is green. You don't go out praising the host pipe <laughs> because it wasn't the host pipe that yes. was making the garden go green. Yes. It was the water. The host yes. pipe was literally just the, the channel. Carrier, the it chair. was the carrier the of that water. It's not about you. It's about the God that's in you Amen. that will do that. It is not about you. Not great. No. You're just part of the vessel no. that is carrying this place. Exactly. And, and that's what we need to focus on when we pray for somebody who needs healing or deliverance or touch from God. We pray. That's yeah. our job. Um, the touch, yeah. that's God's job. Yeah. So we pray in the name of Jesus with all of our hearts. And then whatever happens, that is up to God. Mm. That is up to God. You know, that, that part shouldn't concern us. Yeah. Otherwise it can bog one down. Yeah. And one, one is so paranoid. You know, what if nothing happens? Yeah. What if nothing happens? That one ever does it in the first place. Yeah. Um, and then the Lord's hands are tied, you know, and, and he cannot move. Um, so laying on hands um, for, for healing, for deliverance. And um, someone just needs a touch from the Lord. So, so important. It is a, a sacred privilege and one we should never shy away from ever, ever, ever. Come on, yeah. um, you know, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is, is something else. We, we, we spoke about it when we spoke about Ananias um, and Saul um, laying on hands for somebody to receive the Holy Spirit. Also a beautiful, beautiful thing um, to lay hands on someone. They receive the Spirit of God. But once again, not completely always necessary. Yeah. Um, you know, there are many instances in the scripture where nobody laid hands on anybody and they were filled with the, with the Spirit. I mean, Acts chapter 2, the first yeah, disciples, nobody laid that. hands on, yeah. on the first disciples. The Lord filled them from on high. And um, the encounter uh, that Peter had with Cornelius mm. um, in the Word of God, when Cornelius was filled with the Holy Spirit and his whole household, you know, uh, Peter did not even have a chance to pray. Yeah. <laughs> the Spirit just flooded in, you know, and did the job. Um, but when one can lay on of hands for that, for the spirit baptism, it's a beautiful thing and something that we definitely must do because there are enough examples in scripture in which 
the disciples of Christ, the apostles, lay hands on people to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Um, it's the same with healing. Yeah. We lay hands on people to receive healing when we can. But, you know, if somebody is sick and we need to pray for them over the telephone, you know, God can move through the airwaves yeah. and he, he, the, the Spirit wraps himself around our words yeah. and gets the job done. So when we can, we lay on hands. When we can't, we speak a word, we confess, we pray with all the faith in our hearts. And the Spirit of God will use those words to get the job done. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say this, and we're about, because we need to wrap up. And it's time is flying. <laughs> so much. <laughs> we're, having, we're having so much fun. I just want to say this, is yes, there are instances where crowds are too big, and you maybe have to do it over the telephone. But for me, the nice part about the laying on of hands is the personal side. Yes. And that is it. God wants you to go out there and become personal yes. with the people out there that needs Him. Amen. And share Him with everything you've Amen. got on the inside. It's, it's the heart of God, that personal touch. Yeah. Um, it is the heart of God. I mean, that's why God compares himself to being a shepherd. Yeah. You know, a shepherd touches the sheep, cares for the sheep, guides the sheep. It's very intimate. It's very personal. And that's how the Lord wants us to be. You know, and at the beginning, it might feel a little bit strange, um, you know, but as one does it more and more, oh, it becomes so it's natural, yeah. so natural. And, and your heart becomes the heart of God until you can't wait to put hands yeah. on somebody and to, to embrace them and to say, let me pray for you yeah. with my hands and, and let us together experience how God is going to move in your That's life. Good. Amen and amen. amen. Oh, viewers, I trust you have been inspired. I trust you have been encouraged. Go out there, lay hands on the sick and you will see them recover. Amen. What a privilege that God has given us to be able to touch people and see him move through us. Until next time, please connect with the ministry, connect with me on social media, Evangelist Tamron Clintworth, and please join us for the next episode. We are going to discuss another elementary teaching, and it is going to be fantastic. Amen and amen.